Hello, I'm Robert Strand, the Executive Director of the Center for Responsible Business at Berkeley Haas. Each semester, the Center for Responsible Business partners with business and thought leaders to bring a series of events around a topic of corporate responsibility and sustainability to UC Berkeley. I'm sitting here today with Bennett Freeman of Calvert Investments following today's Peterson Series event. Calvert is a global leader in responsible investments and offers mutual funds that invest in socially and environmentally responsible companies. Bennett, you lead Calvert's environmental, social, and governance analysis, shareholder advocacy, and public policy initiatives, and its team of sustainability research analysts. Uh, we're absolutely thrilled to have you here to share your expertise as part of the Peterson series. Now, I want to ask a couple of questions. Uh, a key point you made during today's event is that human rights risks are real material risks. Can you summarize this perspective sure. again for us? I think that's a very critical starting point. Yeah, absolutely. Robert, well, first, thank you very much for inviting me to speak in the Peterson series today. And it's wonderful to be back at, at Haas and Berkeley, where I was an undergraduate. Um, for us at Calvert, and for me personally, human rights are first and foremost about moral values and universal standards. But for us at Calvert, at the same time, human rights also represent material risks that we have to take into account as we construct and manage our portfolios on behalf of our shareholders. Human rights can present risks to companies in a range of industries, whether extractive industries like oil and gas and mining that operate in countries with repressive governments or with conflict zones uh, on one end of the spectrum, or at the other end of the spectrum, uh, companies in the information communications technology sector, whether they're internet companies or mobile communications or others that have to deal with real world uh, problems around censorship and freedom of expression or surveillance and the right to privacy. So we're seeing both in older industries and newer ones a whole range of human rights issues that present operational and reputational risks for company managements and in turn present risks for uh, investors as we try to deliver uh, stable and positive returns to our investors. So the bad news is, is that these risks persist and have even grown for some companies and in some industries. Uh, the better news though is that it's not just the Calverts and the other longtime socially responsible investors, as we've called ourselves, that are aware of these risks. There's now a growing number of mainstream institutional asset managers and asset owners that are beginning to see the world as we do, a world of risk and opportunity involving human rights, among many other issues. OK, so you've seen this move more into the mainstream then? Yeah. Now, Bennett, it goes without saying that people who uh, invest in responsible investments, they want to have an impact on the world. Now, can you paint a picture for us? How is this being measured? And what is Calvert's role in this? So people who are attracted to our funds or, or others uh, in the marketplace uh, clearly share the primary goal of their funds delivering solid performance, uh, whether it's for retirement savings or other investment purposes. But investors also come to us uh, because of the particular view of the world that we have that uh, has a values basis, but even more importantly in the 21st century, understands the whole range of corporate responsibility and sustainability risks and opportunities that companies in a whole range of industries face. So we measure uh, our success in addressing our shareholders' concerns and meeting their expectations really in two ways. Uh, first and foremost, by delivering uh, solid positive returns, which we do for the most part. Uh, across uh, our 40 or so different mutual funds, uh, ranging across well, virtually every style box, as we call them, uh, in the in investment categories. Uh, but secondly, in terms of the impact that we make through our shareholder advocacy and our mm -hmm. public policy work. And we very much believe in the power of investment to improve 
of the world to strengthen corporate responsibility, to advance sustainability. And we apply a whole range of tools, uh, shareholder resolutions, uh, dialogue with management of companies, uh, coalitions with other investors, sometimes with activist groups, NGOs, and public policy initiatives at the state and federal level in, in the U.S., internationally through the U.N. or the World Bank or other institutions to try to lift standards for whole industries. So we are active owners uh, who believe in engaging with companies and, and whole industries to improve performance, to lift standards, and we are, are judged by the influence that we exert and ultimately the impact that we have uh, across the whole range of environmental, social, and governance issues. You know, as I reflect upon the, the conversation that we had today during the Peterson series, uh, this notion of taking into account human rights mm -hmm. and putting it into uh, a framework for investment decision making. Uh, sometimes when I sit back I wonder, are, are we at the Center for Responsible Business? Are we in a bit of a bubble having these kind of conversations? How mainstream are these conversations? Can you talk a little bit yeah. about that, what you see now yeah. and maybe looking ahead a bit? Yeah. These conversations are becoming more mainstream. They frankly used to take place more or less in a bubble uh, inside Calvert with some of our the smaller uh, competitors and among the traditionally socially responsible investors. Uh, but we were very much having these conversations amongst ourselves in a fairly small echo chamber. Uh, the good news, uh, though, even as these problems persist and in many ways have um, uh, become exacerbated, is that there's now a wider range of investors who are part of the conversation. Some of the biggest pension funds in the U.S. and Europe, uh, pension funds in the Scandinavian countries and the Netherlands, uh, some of the church pension funds, I'm thinking of Church of England, Church of Sweden, Pension funds in the U.S., I'm thinking of CalPERS and CalSTRS, first and foremost here in California, but also New York City and New York State. Uh, but some of the big institutional asset managers as well are now beginning to have these conversations, and indeed even some of the biggest banks. Um, I've had conversations in recent months with J.P. Morgan Chase, uh, with Citi Citibank, um, with BNP Paribas of France, uh, with Goldman Sachs. Uh, and there are uh, analysts and portfolio managers uh, at those institutions that are becoming aware of human rights related risk. Uh, I, I wouldn't say that um, they all have comprehensive due diligence processes to assess human rights risk. Uh, some of them are further down the road than others. But the good news is there is a growing awareness of uh, the materiality of human rights. And I'd say above all, uh, in the uh, apparel and retail industries um, going back a number of years in extractives, oil and mining, uh, and there's a growing awareness around uh, uh, information, communications, technology. So it's a much broader conversation now. We're still in relatively early days, but I'm heartened um, that the conversation is beyond the culverts of the world. Uh, and that so-called mainstream and investors are beginning to become more aware of these issues and risks. Much of what we're talking about here, I would argue, fits very nicely within one of the defining principles for the Berkeley Haas. And that defining principle that I'm thinking of is beyond yourself. Considering human rights issues as an investor this beyond yourself principle speaks to me. And I am, could you offer a little bit of color <laughs> on uh, why, uh, why think beyond yourself? Why not just join the investment firm, make a lot of money for yourself and be done with it? Why beyond yourself? Well, the prevailing norm has been to focus on oneself and to uh, get an MBA at, at Haas or another world-class business school and go off and uh, find success in uh, financial terms and make a lot of money and, and, and that's fine and, and people have the right to pursue those objectives. Uh, but I really believe that in the 21st century uh, that succeeding in any business really, um, small or large, really in any industry, 
requires a, an awareness, an understanding, a sensitivity for the kinds of issues and pressures and expectations mm -hmm. that uh, are imposed by society uh, on business. And whether one thinks of oneself as being driven primarily by values uh, or by profits, these kinds of issues, including human rights issues, uh, are inescapable. Uh, and I just don't think that, that a person in the business world is going to be able to build a career in the 21st century without navigating these issues. And I also believe that uh, business has to demonstrate greater societal benefit beyond itself, uh, whether as individuals or as companies, uh, to really generate uh, benefit that addresses some of the great sustainability challenges the world faces. There's just such a whole world of opportunity for uh, business to address some of the greatest challenges of our time, whether it's uh, poverty or disease or uh, lack of empowerment by, for women and girls, um, you know, water scarcity, uh, climate change, of course. Um, these are all uh, areas that present huge problems for country after country, but at the same time, huge opportunities for business and particularly for people coming out of business school uh, in the mid part of the second decade of the 21st century who uh, can really make a career of uh, doing good as well as doing well, more now than ever. Oh, that's great. Bennett, thank you so much. Thank you, Robert. Pleasure to be back at Oz. Great Cheers. to have you here. Thank you.